The other day I tried to pat my belly and rub my head at the same time, and then I remembered I'd deconstructed. This is the Ruth Stonehouse podcast presenting the new chapbook series with Zoe Ryder White. Hi, welcome to the Ruth Stonehouse podcast. I'm <laughs> Bianca Stone. And I'm so excited to be joined today by the poet Zoe Ryder White. Zoe Ryder White's poems have appeared in many magazines, including Thrush, Hobart, Six Finch, Three Penny Review, Crab Creek Review, and Subtropics. She's authored several chapbooks, um, A Study in Spring with the poet Nicole Callahan, as well as the book Elsewhere, another collaboration with Nicole Callahan from Six Finch. She's a former public elementary school teacher. She edits books for educators about the craft of teaching, um, which is amazing. And we're talking today about her newest book. It's a chapbook from Factory Hall of Press and it's called Hyperspace and it's gorgeous. And thank you so much for being here, Zoe. Thank you for having me. Sorry, I interrupted your introduction laugh. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I, that's the best kind. Uh, thing to do in an introduction is to just bark out a laugh I, I mean why not I know I've definitely been at some readings and laughed when somebody's introducing me especially if it's like a really old bio that they found online and I'm like wow yeah that, but, I don't think that's the most current but that's close yeah enough. I know I was, I was like this is from 2020 but it'll have to do that's um good. uh so yeah hyperspace uh I'm I'm so excited to talk about this book on on a couple of different levels. Um, we've been having this ongoing discussion about the construction and conceits around manuscripts themselves, both full length and chapbooks. Um, but then also just your subject matter uh, is so beautiful and relevant right now. Um, in hyperspace, uh, hyperspace itself as an as a thing in the book is both material and immaterial. Um, a place of great loneliness, but also a place it seems to be alone, to want to be alone. Um, and I'm curious about, just tell me a little bit about um, the idea behind putting this book together. Um, that the first time that you imagined this space uh, and what that looked like to you and what your first thoughts about turning this into a chapbook were. Mm. Um, I just was, your was, your initial reaction to that idea. Yeah, I, I guess I was thinking about that um, this morning. I was trying to remember when I wrote the first one um, and Letter Home from yeah. Hyperspace is the first, was the first one. I didn't intend to write any more than, than that. And I think mm -hmm. it was, I think it was two, 2018, summer of 2018. And I, I think I had encountered a, a prompt somewhere to write a poem that was a letter home from a city that you'd never been to. So I wrote a poem called Letter Home from Halifax about Halifax, Nova Scotia, which I've, I've never been there. And I thought, this is, this is so great. You can, you, can, you can write as though you know what you're talking about, <laughs> even when you don't. And um, it was really fun to do that. And then I think, I was just looking back in my files and the next poem that I wrote the next day was Letter Home from Hyperspace. And I think I've, I've always been really fascinated by these sort of liminal in-betweenish spaces and the earthbound version is, is, is like a tide pool or a ditch or a, you know, the sort of the spaces on the edge of, yeah. of, of, distinction so that there's sort of this yeah. this like mix of um flora and fauna and and yeah. this mix of just more than one thing existing at the same time right and it's like the gray area of yeah okay. yeah so i i it's love i space. love ditches in particular i've had i've i wrote a bunch of letters from the ditch too <laughs> maybe a little awesome. less successful <laughs> Because <laughs> mostly it's just like me okay, but just the ditch. <laughs> yeah, I, I just thought letters from the ditch. That's like so. I, I love that already. Yeah. <laughs> don't give up on that project. There are a bunch of them, so maybe I'll go back to that at some yeah. point. But um, but hyperspace. Um, 
it's sort of hyperspace different than space is well is right <laughs> I, I mean so I meant to it, look it up it's, it's not even a real thing it's like it's like a sci-fi thing it's like right it's like it's, it's like, like oh my god there's sorry there's this cardinal like sitting right outside my window is I think oh. I can hear it yeah <laughs> it's amazing but oh my god it, it also it's like a tree that just flowered a fruit tree and he's like oh like sitting at the top like <laughs> singing for a mate and my cat just jumped up sorry sorry That's for the fine. noise no no, um, no it's good um but yeah hyperspace is like extra extra space it's, it's like, like extra space it's also the in between because it's like you know when the millennium falcon starts going uh, right. into hyperspace i loved that so much as a yeah. kid like watching those lines just just yeah. you know the lines are going like that and you're not yeah you're not anywhere yet, but you're about to go, and totally. then you're going. But yeah, it's like the rearing back before you there. shoot forward. Yeah, 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 yeah. So there's sort of it's sort of a a, a liminal space in space. Um, yeah, and also my husband reads a lot about physics and and uh, understands it a lot better than I do. But he'll tell me things about what he's reading about. So you know, like, um, like spooky action at a distance is uh, yeah. like quantum entanglement and things like that. Oh my that. God. There's nothing more fun for poets than just like, oh my God, dipping their toe into physics. Right. And it's and just a like, toe. I don't, I yeah, don't it's, really it's, it's not even it, a toe. But, it's like yeah. the tip of your toenail, but yeah. it's, yeah. Uh, it's enough. It's like, yeah. Yeah. And I think great. too, like it appealed to me, you're right, that there's something lonely about being there but there's also something sort of appealing about the loneliness and the solitude i have three kids i have a 12 year old and and five year old twins and so i think um they were three when i was starting to write these and solitude has been something that's been hard to come by and yeah um, i know i was like i relate to this like I just, yeah <laughs> me I out like, in space. I just, yeah i want to go just like take off my clothes and float around by myself yeah out there <laughs> yeah speaking of that um you know there's there's a couple of times that I mean definitely the body is important in this book um and a couple of times you say uh with no body I'm all body and I thought that was really uh it seems like an important factor in this as well um and, and it's another theme that keeps coming up in these uh, discussions, uh, manuscript discussions, um, but just this sort of like investigation of the self as mm -hmm. you understand the body and the self um, together and sort of needing, I don't even know if it's needing to detach from the body or just it just happens or, you know, it's just a constant like push and pull between um, being grounded in the body and then being like out in space. Um, but talk a little bit about, uh, I don't know how, how the body did was that an important like catalyst for you and talking about this space like sometimes the body seems to actually be existing in hyperspace and then other times it seems like there is no body at all there is none right i guess that's sort of the confusion about being a self in a body on a planet in space in real life too whatever real life is you know i, I think about that all the time like what is what is this thing yeah for and yeah and and i'm i'm very rooted in it you know i love i love the physical world and um the you know i delight in the physicality of being with my kids and you know my friends and my husband and my dog <laughs> you know yeah. I, I feel really um often really connected to the body and that there's no real distinction between the body and the spirit whatever you know all the other stuff <laughs> um and that it's almost silly to spend so much time thinking about it um but yeah. at other times i don't feel like that i feel like what is this thing and who is moving it around <laughs> you know yeah. it's sort of a, it's a weird back and forth sort of pendulum feeling so i think that's why in in the in that hyperspace conceit sometimes there is a body walking around doing stuff or floating around doing stuff. Um, I mean, there's certainly objects um, yeah. and, and things, um, but sometimes there isn't. And I think I like 
best when I'm not thinking about the distinction at all. Um, I feel most comfortable when I'm not um, in, yeah. in I'm just like living life, walking around life. Um, well, that it's it's sort of like simultaneously both. Um, just thinking about that gray area again. That uh, that's that's what I love so much about the imagination of this book is that it, uh, you know, it's just it, it's like the place the hyperspace itself, where sometimes it feels like very material. You're sitting on something, for example, you're or holding an object, and other times it's it feels very empty, and there's like there's nothing there. Mm -hmm. um, but just those contradictions uh, can both exist at the same time. And that's, mm. that's not wrong, you know? Uh, so I think let's, let's look at, let's look at one of the poems from the book so people can know what the hell we're talking about. Sure. <laughs> Should I read that first one? Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Um, letter home from cover you. Look at this beautiful cover. <laughs> oh yeah it's so I'm glad beautiful. that I love yeah. it so much <laughs> I'm so glad you were you were an easy author to <laughs> that's all you that's all I want to hear is I love it I'm like okay great that's, that's exactly what I felt um I yeah I had no idea that you were going to make the cover actually or that you were yeah involved um so I was still yeah it's very very like side gig thing we love to do but yeah Ben and I yeah yeah, yeah. good collaboration <laughs> Um, okay, so this is Letter Home from Hyperspace. All this planning to get here and I couldn't bring my body. More than one planet has rings, you know, and if I had a me, I'd want those rings around it. Though they burn, they remind me of gold dust thrown across a stripe of light. Knives, electric lassos, sugar. Without the body, I am all body which is to say, all mouth. The stars are more violent than expected and more tender. We drift through each other from time to time. In spite of this lack of tissue and bone, there are points of heat that want pressing, same as home, but who has hands? If you were here, you'd know what to do. Mm. Beautiful. Tell me about the, was this one of the early poems that you wrote for the series? Yeah, that was the first one. That was the first one. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that was the first sort of, oh, I can be anywhere. I can write from any location. I also really love letters. Um, and I, I, I love to read letters, collections mm -hmm. of letters. I was a very avid letter writer until email happened. Um, but I still write letters, actually. I still write paper letters. I have a, a few, um, a couple of friends that I write to um, who write back, which is just like the most amazing, distinct joy to open your mailbox and there's a letter that somebody wrote on with their hands. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, so I think that's why the letters, um, the the letter uh, appeals to me a lot. Um, but that was the first one, yeah, that I wrote from hyperspace. Um, what did you ask about that? I got distracted by talking about. I what? got. I don't remember, but I. I <laughs> well, the fact that it is an address um, to somebody, you know, I got the sense in the in the poems that the speaker really wanted to be out, like away from everybody. I was thinking about your. I, I knew you had kids, and um, and I, I feel like sometimes you do. Your your physically, your body is very invaded a lot of the time. Yeah. Um, and your space, uh, but just any human can feel that in a relationship sure. or whatever. Um, but just the claustrophobia of the body itself and the speaker really wanting to be gone and alone and thinking and working things out and having, you know, like a hyperspace writing retreat. Um, but <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. It was more like a metaphysical retreat or so, you know, it's like, yeah. uh, you need this sort of ambiguous space in order to have spontaneous, like creative thoughts or something, you know, like right. you, you just like create this like um, philosophical like niche where you can just sort of hide. I mean, that's just like 
that's so what poets want, you know, it's, mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, then you go to that place and, and you're writing letters to the you, right. um, you're, you're reaching, <laughs> you start immediately start reaching back. And like, right. I felt like really, I related, I, you know, I thought that was such a human, um, or such a human impulse in the poems. Yeah, it's true. I mean, it's, I guess it's, I haven't really thought of it like that before, just the, um, just thinking about what was going on in my real life at that time. It was, it was a, we lived in a little apartment in Red Hook in Brooklyn and the twins were getting bigger and there was not a lot of space, physical space for any of yeah. us. And it was a, I remember it so fondly. It was such a beautiful sort of crashing time um in a lot of ways um yeah but also just that 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 as a as a parent maybe especially as a mother um um that the sort of loss of distinction between your own body and your and your children's um yeah which i love i mean i love i love it right, right. <laughs> I, I love i love the the cuddliness um mm -hmm. But but yes, and also I guess the sort of the um, how to make space for a creative life um, in the midst of as part of a busy family life and work life and you know how how to do that. So when I like when I write still um, is every day, but um, after everybody's asleep, that's like my okay. sacred at time night. Um, at night. Yeah, yeah, and I was never a night person, but I have become one um, because yeah, that's it's like a house quiet and mm -hmm. and and you know, sort of figuring out that um, that's really crucial to me for uh, to have and preserve that space, even if it's just a little bit of time. If I'm super tired or something, I still have to mostly 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 I, I write and read um during that time sometimes I don't write sometimes I just read but um just as important yeah and I, I, I think um just figuring out how to integrate you know like integrate all those different pieces into a whole um human and 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 to be a distinct part of the family unit as well as sort of the blurred edge um, mama, you know, um, like it all can happen at the same time. Um, yeah. I know we're very, there's a lot of anxiety in trying to like compartmentalize uh, mm -hmm. all these different selves and, you know, our culture reinforces that. And I, I think, you know, there's so many just writers bitching I'm one of them like bitching with other writers about oh, I just want to write but I feel like such a monster like yeah, my kids totally. like uh I, I feel like I'm emotionally removed from them because I'm trying to work things out and like yeah I don't want to fuck them up and like yeah I don't want to put my writing above them you know they don't I I honestly don't um I'm not one of those people that's like my art's more important than anything right. else. It's like yeah. it's really not um, no. more important <laughs> than my daughter's life. Right. No. <laughs> and and that's I don't have great. to choose. Yeah. Uh, I, it's not like it's not so frustrating, but um, but it the benefits outweigh uh, the frustration just tenfold. Uh, yeah. But. You know, I wrote down that line uh, here in hyperspace. I'm a thought thrown against a ceiling fan. Um, <laughs> there's like, it's almost like uh, it kind of makes me think like it's like an obliteration, like a, a wanting to just obliterate all that thought, that rumination, that place that's saying like. I want to be a writer and a mother at the same time. Like I want to do all these things, like trying to figure it out. And it's like, I don't know, just that kind of thought. I just want to, I do want to throw that against the ceiling fan. You know, yeah. I do want to like hyperspace yeah. almost like becomes this like, it's like, it's like writers, tell me what you think about this. Poets who are coming up with an idea to write a series of poems. It's such a gift to find some way in to talk about ineffable things that aren't just one thing um mm -hmm. and 
landscapes seem to be a perfect landscapes even though this is like mm -hmm. a even this strange landscape but it yeah. is landscapes seem to be perfect because you can do so much there and so much can change there can be such such different um things occurring in that landscape in that place yeah and it's like an imagined place so right and then you can yeah i find i mean it was really a trick for myself really it was a trick to be able to say what i was trying to say and think what i was trying to think it's like it's a it's i think it is a trick it's like every, a it's every like, poem that i've written that i like has yeah. that some sort of trick i have to trick myself out of my um self-consciousness in a way um that's like the, the dream poems too are like that the some of this i dreamed poems that are in in that collection there um it's the same thing maybe i did dream some of it but some of it i didn't dream and sometimes i'll write a poem that says i dreamed blah 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 and i didn't dream it i'm just making it right. up but right. But but it gives me a little leg up or a toehold into um, that kind of I guess. Um, well, dream is like the same thing. Our dreams perfect because I, I was just noticing uh, the songs I was listening to. Um, they were Phoebe Bridger songs and like Boy Genius songs, and I was noticing like a lot of times that dreams they talked. There was like a line about I dreamed this, I dreamed that. And dreams are a, a perfect example of the trick you can use that even that your own body and mind uses in order to work through these complicated reality, yeah. you know, com confrontations with reality and self. Yeah. Um, so it makes sense that you say that. Um, yeah. I had written those, those poems, those some of this I dream poems sort of alongside. Um, yeah the hyperspace poems and I didn't know that they were going to go together um I'm just going to make my mail stop making noise um let's read they, one of them yeah I, I didn't yeah I didn't know that they were going to go together that I and I didn't know I was making a, a chat book I I had them I, I don't I just make I write so many poems and most of them I don't revise and they live in my google drive and there's just like Oh, there's so many from all these years um, and I find the process of collecting and I like revising an individual poem but the process of collecting and making a manuscript um, is sort of excruciating but this wasn't yeah. um, because there was the hyperspace trick and then when I figured out I could sort of put the intersperse the some of this I dreamed poems because they go together for that same reason um, yeah. That was fun. There was sort of a joyful, joyful, um, a joy in that process um, in a way that I haven't felt when trying to make a manuscript on my own before. I have, I have many failed ones that I will not send anywhere. <laughs> yeah. But the only other time I had make made a finished manuscript was with Nicole. Um, those two other chat books, and we have one more too um, that we wrote. I think, I guess that was about. A couple of years ago, um, that's that's not finished yet, but um, because that's the, there's their conversations, right? They they sort of guide themselves when there's another uh, mind there. Um, so well, anyway, anyway the, um, yeah, <laughs> having that having an anchor, having a theme um, is is like kind of essential, even if it's like a very abstract, arbitrary one in putting a manuscript together. So yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Do you want to read? The number six, some of this I dreamed. dreamed one? Sure. Yeah. This I did dream, actually. <laughs> a real dream, not even a fake one. Some of this I dreamed, number six. I was dying from something that had turned my insides to swollen light. A handful, a handful gathered around, backlit humans by the shape of them, expectant, waiting. I waited too. What happens now, I asked, feeling important. No one knew. A little light leaked from my throat's hollow, but it was easy enough to plug the hole with a fingertip. What do you feel like doing, someone asked. Isn't it your birthday? I feel like a balloon, I said, like I've swallowed too much air. Oh, that phase, said someone who died already and remembered. If you walk around the yard, you might feel better. My daughter's cat watched from under the cedar tree, his mouth stuffed with bright yellow feathers. 
Mm. What I love about this poem in the collection is the address to death. Um, Cause there is this sense that this is death, um, this mm. space. And you sort of don't know you're dead or you, you know, mm -hmm. it's, tell yeah. me about that. Or is there anything to tell? Or just tell me about this. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I think, yeah, it's, it's, it's part of the big mystery of what, what goes on. After like this, what, is, is what happens that, now? I yeah, asked. what happens now? What happens yeah. now? And yeah, it uh, it does feel like a fit with the hyperspace. Maybe maybe you go there for a while, it's drift around. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I actually did just dream that almost just exactly like that. Um, that that I was I dreamed I was like dead, dying, but it wasn't a big deal. It wasn't a problem. Mm -hmm. um, it was just sort of happening, and I was felt weird and I had you know it, I don't remember there being people that I actually know but it was like figures of people that I knew um and then and then my, my daughter's cat had actually just died he got he got mm. hit and and we had just had a uh family burial of this beloved beast um and wow. I think I think that was part of it too just thinking about about uh the little cat he was so he was so so lifelike in his death you know his little paws were just the same and something about yeah just uh, the body or, looked like the yeah. living body but was definitely not <laughs> yeah not probably having to sort of watch your child experience loss uh, yeah. you know yeah. pets are usually the first experience yeah. loss yeah 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 um it, yeah, I was explaining death is, I mean, it's sort of like, meh, we all die. Yeah. There's not much to. <laughs> yeah. My, my, the, the twins, they're, um, they're five now, but there was a, a time maybe about a year ago and they just talked about death all the time. And, mm. um, my daughter Ivy, uh, we were, we were driving by a cemetery and, she said, mom, you're really lucky that you have three kids. Some people only have two. And I said, why? And she said, well, in case one of us goes to the grave, you'll have, you'll still have two left. Oh my <laughs> God. Like, oh yeah. my God. No one's going to the grave. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. But they're so matter of fact about it at that age. I don't know if your daughter. I know. No, daughter, she totally is. She's uh, my son too. He's just, he's just like you know, mom. When when you die, um, I'll carry your body around for you. I'll take care of your bones. And oh my just, god, just, I, mean, that's so, I love that's so cute, <laughs> sweet. Yeah. It, and it it seems like no big no big deal to them. And is it because they don't understand, or is it because they understand more <laughs> than we do? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's sure that, that, I mean, it, it completely links to our anxiety about the body. Cause I think when you start getting older and you start sort of thinking harder about it, you're like, wait a minute, um, I'm just going to die. And this, what's it's, I'm just, I'm in this like body that's constantly dying. Um, yeah. Oh, it's such a trip too. I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm going to be 47 next month and, and it's so yeah. weird. It's so normal and and just weird to like i mean i'm 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 fine i'm you know I'm right luckily quite healthy and you know um yeah but it, it it but it's it's a very strange um thing to be getting older and to see people i love struggling in their bodies with their bodies and yeah you know, um it's coming for and I'm like all of us <laughs> Um, well, I'd love for you to read one more poem before to sing us out here. Okay. Um, which one should I read? Um, let's see. This one's called The Unbodied. It's just where the page fell open. <laughs> Sounds great. Where the staple is. The Unbodied. The other day I tried to pat my belly and rub my head at the same time 
And then I remembered I deconstructed that vacillating between dimensions leaves me weepy and slightly nauseous in spite of occasional euphoria. I saw a warbler out here once, but I was too 2D at the moment to ask her into my hand, nothing to stand on. Mostly I just float around, drink, compose text I'd send if I had that kind of reception. I do get earth every hour or so on the hi-fi, sometimes Proxima Centauri. The voices say, I am all alone. They sing it. We should make a band, the unbodied. It's a fully inclusive space. The acoustics are good if you like endless reverb. <laughs> oh. oh, I love that. <laughs> that song so much. Zoe, thank you so much for coming and talking to me about this. Thank you so much for having me and for uh, making such a beautiful cover. It's such a perfect fit. Um, yeah, it really was a perfect fit for me. I'm a total sci-fi dork, so <laughs> yeah. I, I am going to figure out a way to get myself a yellow jumpsuit and uh, right. Oh my God, I see him. I was like, <laughs> yeah, I was like, this is really perfect color <laughs> jumpsuit. Yeah. Um, thank you. And uh, thank you. I will put a link to where to get the chat book from Factory Hall of Press on awesome. the show notes page. And um, uh, okay, have a great rest of your Sunday. You too. Okay. <laughs> Bye. Take care. Bye.